that is chilling, you know what I'm saying? Living. All my niggas is living. Where I think I'll be, 10 years, I don't think I'm gonna see it, dog, for real, man. That shit ain't promised, man. And I don't think my luck is that good. I hope it is, but if it ain't, so be it. You ready? I wouldn't mind being the world champ, but you know, I'll, I'll do whatever it takes to get there. And if I don't get there, I hope somebody else from Hawaii does. Well, it's the brothers from the city of sunshine and sunset beach where bikinis swing every single week, either daytime, nighttime, anytime's the right time. So welcome to the spot where every day is like the summertime. Smoking up a fatty in the Fleetwood Caddy, Big Daddy JD. On day one, Papa T. How about to show you how we do it in the HIC? Know what I mean? My paradise, known for the green. Only the A1 Dank got a place in my Vega. An everyday thing from the paradise players. Rolling in the daytime into the night, Tangeray and Pineapple got us feeling all right. How he started surfing was the kid across the street gave him, um, well, known him an old surfboard. And so the two of us would go out there. So he'd be out there dog padding, and I'm going, don't you dare drunk. Because <laughs> I don't know how to swim. I still don't know how to swim. And relax on this first met Sonny is my first memory of him when I was about four or five years old. And uh, there's a sandbox right here. I was playing in my sandbox and I just heard this noise. He used to do this thing with his, with his hand like a... Yeah, I remember uh, Jason saying, yeah, Sonny's coming down the trail. So, you know, don't make any noise. Make, <laughs> pretend that nobody's home. <laughs> yeah, we're coming up from the west side. Sonny passed the Magdalena's house every day on his way to a place called Shallows where he first learned to surf. From day one he was hooked. He practically lived with the Magdalena's family and surfed nearly every day with Sino's sons, Jason and John. You know, about eight, nine years old, we've seen him at Miley. And then um, Ralph Sons many winning contests. Uh, nine to ten years old, I think he was in. And he, he got his first win, and after that, non-stop, you know, every single contest, win, 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 win. Started winning everything in sight. I think I remember he was counting a uh, winning streak he had of heats, and it was something like maybe 50 straight or something like that. This was when he was probably 13 or so. Surfing was the first priority in Sonny's life. Everything else took a back seat, including homework. Sonny rarely missed a day at the beach, but the same couldn't be said about school. He couldn't concentrate in school because he went to Wainai and the, the, the ocean is right there. So. I don't have too much memory because uh, I work this area right here every day. And every time I get away, I know, I know that boy not going to be in school, so, you know, you know, I never did see him quite often, but when he in school, he's on Rasco, yeah? Just I can't remember. I worked here 30 years, but they call me Silva. But he, there was times where he cut out of class and come down the beach, and I would take away his surfboard and tell him sit next to me in the tower and wait till all the kids are out of school and let the kids surf and let him watch, you know, just so he learned. When Sonny was in ninth grade, uh, I don't know if you could call it ninth grade because he didn't go to school that much, but... When he started going to school, he'd be there like 6 o'clock in the morning out there on the beach before school, after school. Then it was like during school. You know, we desperately all tried to get Sonny to stay in school, 
Um, after that meeting, it was totally apparent he wasn't going to stay in school, so we all tried our best to help him with his surfing career, and um, we all felt that was the best choice for Sonny, and I, I think it turned out really good for Sonny. He surfed like a grown man. I mean, he was like one of the best surfers in the world at like 14 years old. He first joined the Macaw surf team at the age of 13 and would adapt the same no-fear approach to competition as his first coach, Bird Mahilona. You gotta turn it a bit more hard. You gotta come straight up. You can't go halfway. You gotta go 12 o'clock. And he used to look at me. He used to get, you know, he goes, what? No way I can do better than you. Well, you know what? You'll never be as good as me. you never make it to the circuit. you never gonna make it on a circuit. You know what? I've seen the determination in his eyes. I mean, I used to psych him out to the point where he's, you know, he wanted it so bad, and yet he didn't even taste some yet. Was it Makai? It was called the Paradise Pro, and I think Sonny was 13 at the time. Although he dominated the amateur ranks, Sonny's first chance to test his skills against the pros like Dan Kailoha, Marvin Foster, and Michael Ho came at the Paradise Pro. A solid showing in the quarterfinals of that event reassured Sonny that he was ready to run with the big dogs. You can see the form. <laughs> Kind of like a pretzel, but you know, the kid, the kid was gonna make it, you know. Well, it's the H-A-W-A-A-A-N. Couple of weeks prior, I um, my 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 anger <laughs> temperament got me kicked off the the world amateur team for Hawaii. Signing up on you before you knock the door down, you gotta loosen up the hinges. How far do you plan to go? I plan on going all the way. It was clear Sonny was ready to take the next step. The Gotcha Pro at Sandy Beach is where Sonny Garcia would make his mark on professional surfing. And I wanted to turn pro and I'm like, yeah, that's it. If I do good next week in the Sandy event, I'm, you know, I'm gonna go on the tour. And there he goes, Sonny Garcia from Hawaii, all the way to the to me, till this day, that Sandy Beach event, the Gotcha Pro, is my my most memorable, you know, best result that I've probably ever had in my whole career. You know, my first first AFP, you know, contest. Really, the, the bad thing in Sonny's career was he never learned how to lose in the beginning. Is there such thing as a good loser? Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> I'm not going out there to lose. I'm in it to win. If I'm if I'm there, entered in the event, I'm there to win. I don't care if there's no money up. I want to win. To the, to the final and uh, just killed Tom Carroll in the final. So, you know, my first win was a pretty big one for me. The Sealand Pro was, uh, you know, in 1990, it was a week after the, the Phuket contest that I'd won. Um, you know, same same scenario. I surfed against um, Derek in the quarters. I think I surfed against Damian Harmon in the semis, and then I surfed against um, Gary Elpitan in the final. And the final was, you know, pretty close. I think I beat Gary Elkerton by .01. For me to win my first event the week before is pretty big, but you know, to win back back to back events was, was insane for me. In the 1994 reunion um, final, I I remember um, the final almost, you know, being really inconsistent and just having to take any wave and. Um, I was actually losing and with um, I think like two minutes ago I, I needed a six and um, I got a you know okay wave did a couple of turns and did a huge floater at the end and um, they ended up giving me a seven and ended up winning the final. You know it, it was an insane final I mean that was that was the year John had just made it back on the tour and um, you know, the surf against John in the final was, was incredible, but, you know, he was surfing really good, and the waves are small, and um, I think I got a 10 in the final. I got a 10, a 9, and an 8, and um, Shmoo had, I think, a 9 and two eight fives, and, you know, it was it was a really close final. And 
Sonny, I'll tell you what, Sonny Garcia in the white shirt is going absolutely berserk. The waves are bruised. He's tore that one apart. It was, it was just insane to surf against Shmoo in, you know, in our first final heat together in the AFB event. You know, in 95, I mean, that was, you know, the year I was going for the world title and, um, you know, I think I, you know, I had to beat Derek to win the, the Sud Quest. Um, it's like a, you know, the Triple Crown of France and I had to beat Derek in that final, so, you know, for me, it, I mean, you know, to serve against Derek is always competitive and to beat him in the final was, was insane and not to mention I got 15 grand for the, the Sud Quest trophy and, and you know, put, put me um, right in contention for the world title. I don't actually think at any given time there is a best surfer in the world. I think there's so many surfers that, surf, that are so talented, that surf so good, that on any given day, anybody can be the best surfer in the world. But to be the world champion is a whole different you know, story. You know, it's, it's all about traveling, being the most focused, the most, you know, the best, the best surfer to able to compete in small waves, in big waves, and choppy, and smooth, and, and everything. That's, a, that's what the sign of a champion is. And you know, I've come close, but you know, everybody that I've lost to, well, mainly Kelly you know, and, and Aki, you know, they, they were able to put it together you know, a little better than I have in, in a year, and I respect them for that. And you know, that's, that's what I aspire to be. You know, I want to be the world champion. Then when you see him come home for the Triple Crown, oh, you know, maybe before that, you meet him in California for the, the big contest that they are up. You know, it's, it's so, so warming, you know. You know, I'd rather win in Hawaii, where all the people I know and my family are, than to win anywhere else. It's important for the Hawaiians to win in Hawaii, so, you know, if, if none of the other Hawaiians make it, you know, I want to definitely be there and win. Very aggressive and powerful surfer. He loves the big waves of the North Shore, as does this man in white, Sonny Garcia, the local favorite. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a first by Triple Crown winner for 1993. Give it up for Hawaiian Sunny Garcia. Oh yeah! Congratulations, Sunny. Sunny Garcia, the Hawaiian winner of the Triple Crown event. Surfing's gotten better and better and better and better each year. You claim when you need a 9.5 at, at the end of your heat and you get it, or at least you think you got it. Multilingual, multi-talented, you know, 
multi-financial. You gotta understand how to deal with the the money, you know, exchanging and stuff like that. So, like I said, Sonny went to school, but was on a different school, the school of life. Yo, players, <laughs> it's game time. I think the bottom turn is a very, very important thing. There's a lot of guys that don't have them that are on tour. Forfeit your paradise. Warriors born of dust, bust till it's twilight. Exotic beaches, mash you poses and leeches. Learn to swim before you kick to these six speeches. We push real waves like masterpieces for the brave. Enslaved by the blaze of the leaders and his day. Upon this crew, two animals out the zoo. Real crew come through and snatch beach breaks like axe on break beats. Take surf beats to reef, makes the hold the chief. So all you motherfuckers just hit the ocean floor. Next time, sun chief, flaming back doors. Everybody goes about doing things in a, in a different way, and I wouldn't say that exactly, you know, the way that I went about doing things when I was young was the right way, but I'm not going to make any apologies for it. That was me, and, you know, it's got me to where I, where I am today, and, and I'm definitely not sorry for it. Let me ride, let me ride. Sunny to cloudy, we ride a rally. Can I have this situation? Ain't too wrong, put a move, no hesitation. Slide and ride, represent the west side. Bit of a rush on a lot of gear. Organization that we drive a lot, and at the same time. Play by the sun, they give me two, so we're gonna do. Make a move, five pass. You're gonna have the power. You get the power. Surfing coming back. You know how they with the long hair. Okay. You get some power. Sunny, get the power. I think Sunny get more of oh, the power. You know that guy? Back again, no trying to wipe my mouth, never quit time. So you know how we do it, and shit's a kid. You screw it, do it, that's what every chance. Feel like after the band, pull the record to get that money, man. I think, you know, power surfing is a lot better than someone who's flicking. And, uh, you know, I think it looks a lot better. One thing about what builds success for us guys is we set attainable goals. We know what we want and we know how we're gonna get them. And there's nothing that's gonna stop us guys from getting them. You know, so I know Sonny can be one world champion. You know, in my heart, he, he is one world champion. I wanna, I wanna at least win one world title before I retire. And um, you know, hopefully this will be the year. And... For me, this you know, the beginning of this year. I mean, it was. Everything just kind of fell into place. You know, I trained really hard, 
you know, during the Triple Crown, I mean, all through the Triple Crown, I, you know, lifted weights, ran, uh, you know, and surfed a lot. Everything just kind of flowed. I just, you know, went to Australia really confident, just like surfing pine trees, just a little bigger, and, um, you know, got to the final, and Flavia was kicking my butt in the final. I, I couldn't get waves, couldn't get in the rhythm, and... You know, I was starting to settle for second, and that's when I, you know, thought that, you know, second wasn't good enough, and it dug deep, and um, I think I got three waves in a row that ended up um, helping me win that event. Big hand, awesome performance all throughout the day. Three battles. I heard Sonny won the first one. I think. Yeah. yeah. And he took the second one. I went, wow. <laughs> so that was a, you know, a good start. Yeah. And up and running, Sonny Garcia. We're taking off getting very deep inside a very, very solid wave indeed. You never see anyone pound it so hard and so wicked, like nothing. Sonny Garcia in the white, you need a 691. You see Sonny just taking off backside, getting a nice little cover up. Fading deep, it's a nice little uh, hook in the pocket there for Sonny Garcia. One of the heaviest, well, probably the most heaviest wave that I've ever surfed. Huntington was a pretty important event. You know, to do well in, uh, I knew that you know a lot of the, the small wave guys were, were hungry to do well. You know, guys like Taj and Jake and uh, you know, a few other the other guys that were close to me in points. And um, you know, I just came off a string of three ninths in a row. You know, Tahiti, Fiji, and J Bay, which for me were, were the events that I thought I was going to do really good in. And um, you know, I came to Huntington and I. Worked on some boards and had some really good boards and felt confident. And, you know, fortunately for me, um, Taj lost early, Luke lost early, Jake lost early, um, and the only guy that was actually really close was um, was Corey Lopez, and I was, you know, fortunate enough to beat him in the semi. I'm pretty stoked. I mean, yeah. 15 years on tour, I've never, never got a free heat. Going into Brazil, I, I knew that Luke needed a first and a second, and that Jake needed to win both Brazil and Pipe, and I needed to lose in, you know, the first round of both events, which was not going to happen. So. Yeah, I'm pretty happy. I mean, every heat I make is a little, a little closer to, to clinching that world title. Well, for Kalani, it was, you know, it was incredible. I, you know, stoked for him. You know, it's been it's been a long time coming. You know, he's, he's been expected to, to do a lot better than he has, and uh, you know, hopefully now that he's got his his first taste of victory. You know, he'll take it take it a long more a long ways. It's, it's pretty incredible, man. You know, ran the win his first first event. You know, at the, the same time I won my first world title. It was pretty incredible. To win at anything is just, it's incredible. Travel is easy, the plane ride not a hassle. Leaving Hawaii and the good ways that we do to go surf and some of the places we do, 
That is the job of it. The surfing part is, is the easiest thing. But you know, just having to travel and be away from home and your friends, and especially when you call home and you know, they're like, hey, you know, back door is like six to eight and the best has been all year. And you know, you're off in Brazil and the waves are two feet and then you, you know, you're in your three mil full suit. You know, that's what you get paid for. That's what actually, you know, that's what I get paid for to leave Hawaii and surf you know, on the tour. Surfing is, a, is an adventure, you know, it's a thing that you really want to do when you're young. And then when you're doing it, you, you start traveling around in all the surfing areas around the world. And after a while, you get tired of it because uh, uh, you just want to stay home after a while and enjoy uh, Hawaii, Hawaii, Hawaii. You can't describe, yeah, I, I don't think you could ever describe to a person that hasn't been barreled, you know, what it's like in a barrel. You know, the view is so incredible. You can, you can, you know, you can see people paddling out or you can see, you know, back there you can see the houses that off the wall and everybody standing on the beach. So it's, it's you know, it's, 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 it's beautiful. <laughs> Young, I seen the fire in his eyes that one day, not knowing, he was going to be one of the best coming out from the west side and surfing hard as he is. And, and it was, you know, I, I just, I just, I just thank God for blessing him and everything that he's doing right now. And uh, I, I knew it from when he was young. Out of everybody, you know, I, I talked to him. I psyched him out. He let get it on, bro. He was ready to get it on in his own. And there was something about him out of all the kids that I've trained. One day, one day, it was the best of the best.
I'd also like to thank all my sponsors, you know, they're all here. Um, Why not? Mark and Brian Simo from Criminal Fear. Um, BYB, who, who are also here, Wendy and Guam, and my family from Pukis are here. Yeah. They made that, that, that long flight from Spain. Misha from, from Warriors are here. Spy Sunglasses. It's, it's been a great year for me. I'd also like to thank all my boys back here, all in black. I love all of you guys. You are my boys, you're all in groovy.